Dear Lord, we thank you for this time to be here in this council meeting. We thank you for our city, your citizens. We ask for your wisdom and give us guidance in the decisions we make. And we thank you for Jesus in his name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Mrs. Kirby. Councilwoman Horton. Here. Councilman Crocker. Here. Councilman Smith. Here. Councilman Davis. Here. Councilman Black. Here. Mayor Pro Tem McVeigh. Here. And Mayor DeGarris. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Disclosure of interest. Any member of the city council may disclose any possible conflict of interest dealing with either any <coughs> item on the printed agenda or with any matter discussed at a previous meeting. Seeing none. We move on to citizens' input. Each person in the audience may take this opportunity to address the city council on any matter which is not on the printed agenda. Mr. Standard did. I'm John Standard, 1310 Barron Road. I'm not here on any issue, so don't jump under the desk or anything. <laughs> but I would like to point out, I frequently, my wife and I frequently watch the meetings on TV. And with the exception of Mr. Speaker over here, Mr. Richardson, um, the use of the microphones is a little bit lacking because if you don't talk right into those mics, it doesn't go out on the TV. And I just wanted to mention that because you all have no way of knowing that sitting up here. But it's a great thing that we have it on television. It's a great thing that the public can hear what's going on. And I just wanted to let you all know that if you can remember to use the mic, it really would help a lot of us, you know. You all and all the taxpayers help pay for the, a really nice speaker system. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. There's none others. Move on to the consent agenda. The items on the consent agenda are approved by a single <coughs> action of the city council. If any council member would like to have an item removed from the consent agenda and considered separately, he or she may request to do so. If there's none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as approved. So yes. moved. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On the workshop item for discussion, item A, the City Council will review an amendment to the purchasing policy. Mr. Massingham? Yes, you all should have a copy of that in, on your uh, iPads. And what I thought I'd do is go through, just go through the pages where there are additions, deletions, or changes. Uh, really, if you'll just start on page one. Under purchasing guidelines overview, it says budgeted expenditures of fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, we've changed that amount to five hundred dollars and less. Do not require a purchase order. So anything over five hundred dollars will require. It used to be fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, we also added that last sentence for purchase card policy. See, we actually attached the purchase card policy, which wasn't attached before. Uh, if you'll go down to the uh, last paragraph, budget expenditures, we've changed the $14,999 to $9,999. And down towards the bottom, it says vendors, it's kind of hard to read this, who provide a valid email address to the finance department will receive an email blast via the financial system. We don't, we've never done that. And, we don't do email blast at this point, so. Uh, page two, under purchase order again, purchase order must be prepared for purchases above $500. If it was $1,500. Uh, page four, we've changed the uh, finance director to the accounting manager and down um, on item J, petty cash, purchase, petty cash purchase policy, 
We've also changed the finance director to accounting manager. And then on page six, under formal quotes, which is similar to what was in the previous page, the 14,999 is changed to 9,999. And on page seven at the top of the page under bid process, the term bid is used to identify responses to solicitations which represent major purchases. Right now it says a $15,000 and over and we've changed that to $10,000. And then down towards the bottom or middle of the page, the bidding process is required when the estimated expenditure is, it was $15,000, change that to 10,000. Then all the following pages from page seven through seven through half of page 22, it outlined what every bid had to have. Uh, city clerk and I discussed this and every bid we have is different. Some of them are tied to grants, some of them are tied to MoDOT, some of them are just equipment purchases. And uh, we felt like since each bid is different that we will have to have different wording on each ones. Um, and like I said, this purchasing policy was done a few years ago under previous administration. So we're just asking that all that be deleted and each bid will be specifically written for itself. In the middle of page 22, uh, vendor registration, we did use a source suite website. Uh, we do not use that and haven't for a couple of years. So we changed that to the City of Popper Bluffs website with the uh, web address in there. Same on that second paragraph under Source Suite, we changed it to City of Popper Bluff. On page 24, the middle of the page, the City Clerk's Office will also be responsible for reinstating vendors to the deba database only after the vendor has satisfactorily demonstrated it says to the finance office but that's actually the city clerk's call so we just deleted that portion and then on page 28 there are two places where finance directors change to accounting manager then on page 29 is the attachment a which is the purchase card policy which was actually written several years ago, but it was never put into the purchase policy. And if y'all have any questions or suggestions. The main big change is the amounts. Second to move this to the voting session to be held February the fifth. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, the city council review request, re request from the planning department for Paul Wrinkle, 2337 Leonard Drive to lease flood buyout property located at 505 Hog Street for a 10 year period. Mr. Avery? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, there is flood buyout property on Hog Street, which would be on the east side of Hog between Hog Street and Hog Creek. Uh, Mr. Wrinkle has uh, contacted myself and the city clerk wishing to lease that for a period of time to garden. <coughs> I talked to Mr. Wrinkle a couple years ago about it, and he said he would like to do it, and I guess he finally decided it's time. So. I think he's a little bit early on his gardening season, but uh, I've looked at the site, marked it out, know what we're talking about, and that means that we won't have to maintain that specific parcel while Mr. Wrinkle has it under his direction. Any questions for me? A little cold to garden too right now. A little bit. Pretty solid out there. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a good use of property that can't be used for much else. So. Uh, it is favorable to the city. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
No questions. I'd entertain a motion second to move this to the voting session to be held February the 5th. So motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, the City Council review request from the Planning Department and the Electrical Board to adopt the 2017 National Electric Code with the exception of Annex H relative to administration. Mr. Avery. Thank you, Mayor. We are presently under the 2008 National Electrical Code. We try to update around every 10 years or so. They put a new edition of the electric National Code out every three years, so this is a nine-year sequence for us. We don't change it every time they put a new one out because it takes time to learn it. It takes time for our electricians and our tradespeople to learn the requirements. Uh, but seeing as we're in 2018 now, uh, we felt that it was time to upgrade this. Uh, there are some changes that uh, it will call for. Uh, not much change in the way the commercial work is required to be done. It does have some requirements on residential. Uh, I know several years ago they went with the ground fault circuit interrupters, commonly called GFCIs, that give you uh, overload protection and, and protection from a shock. Uh, in recent years, there's what's called an arc fault circuit interrupter, which means it's kind of the same thing, but it's on an interior circuit. So bedrooms, bathrooms, and all are required to have that on new construction. It will add some margin of cost to uh, residential construction. We, did, we took it through our electrical standards board, and we sought the uh, advice of our uh, chairman, who is an electrical engineer, Ron Raines with Smith & Company, and uh, the electrical board as a whole recommend approval, as does the planning department. And I've got all the changes that are called out there. Now, the one thing that we did want to exempt ourselves from was from administration, not from inspection, but from administration, because it calls for certain standards that we can't adhere to under the administrative section of that. I believe it's Annex H in that document. Any questions for me? Thank you. Make a motion move it to the voting session. Second. Motion second to move item C to the voting <coughs> session February 5th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D, the City Council review request from the Planning Department and the Historical Commission to amend the Pop Bluff Code of Ordinances, Section 420.440, relative to specifications for historical markers. Mr. Avery. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Planning Department and the Historic Preservation Commission have uh, created a revision to a Section B in this. The uh, deals with your uh, historic markers. Uh, Section B was where we wanted to make changes uh, upon discussion in the Historic Preservation Commission and uh, so that we could have wall-mounted signs and signs that individuals could afford because some of the markers that we put out that are the large ones that are on the, uh, some of the city properties run in the thousands and thousands of dollars. So we didn't feel that was doable for some of the people that would like to recognize their properties. Uh, Emily Wolpers, the Historic Preservation Chair, is here tonight if you have questions that I can't answer. Uh, but we still have the wherewithal to utilize the large signs when they're called for, but also we wanted to give some flexibility for that. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Motion passes the voting session February 5. Second. Motion and second to move item D to the voting session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item E, the City Council review a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve a request to rezone property from RS1 residential duplex to C1 neighborhood commercial to make an existing non-conforming business conforming and to add parking. The applicants are John and Jeanette Clark, 501 Oak Street, 
for property located at 807, 815, and then 819 through 825 Maud Street, Hayden's Barbecue. Mr. Avery. Thank you, Mayor. As you stated, John and Jeanette Clark are the owners. Uh, locally, this is known as Hayden's Restaurant and the lots that are adjoining to it to the west, which uh, they do own. There will be another request on the next item that I'll be standing up here on that deals with some of the other lots they own, but this is the restaurant and the lots to the west toward Ferguson Grove. Uh, surrounding land use is uh, to the north and the east is RD1 residential duplex. To the south is RS3. To the west is C1 neighborhood commercial, being Ferguson Grove. Access is from Maud Street. Police and fire protection is available with fire station number one being the first responder. This was discussed in a meeting in December in the Planning and Zoning Commission. And uh, the recommendation was for approval. Designation of these properties as C1 neighborhood commercial on the Maud Street frontage is logical as property adjoining to the west is zone C1. The north side of the property adjoins RD1 residential dupl duplex, but are mostly single family residences. Hayden's Barbecue has been located at 817 Maud Street since 1948. Uh, it lacks parking for certain events they might wish to have there. And for patrons, according to the ordinance, all parking lots for businesses must be zoned commercial. So even though they've been there since 1948, they have been non-conforming all this time. This would bring them into conformancy with uh, C1 use. And uh, staff and Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval of this request. Questions for me? Mr. Clark is here tonight to represent himself as well. Thank you. My motion is to move to the uh, fifth voting session. February 5th. February 5th. Yeah, February 5th voting session. Okay. Motion and second. All second. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, the City Council review recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve a request to rezone property from RS1 residential duplex to C1 neighborhood commercial to allow parking and green space for an existing business adjoining this property. The applicants are John and Jeanette Clark, 501 Oak Street, for the south 95 feet of 721, 725, and 729 North Main Street, fronting on Maud Street, Hayden's Barbecue. Mr. Avery. Thank you, Mayor. Again, owners are John and Jeanette Clark, uh, requesting to rezone the south half. Let me move my paper clip here where I can read this better. requesting to rezone the uh, lots to the east of Hayden's barbecue and parking lot. The north side of the property would remain RD1 residential duplex and they are requesting that the south part be rezoned to C1 with restrictions and uh, I do have a form that was created by Mr. Clark if in fact the council wishes to put a restriction on these lots to the east of the building. That was not officially done through planning and zoning, but it was a point of discussion when we had the meeting in December. And I don't know if any, if any of y'all know how that lays out. There are, there's open ground to the east going back toward Main Street and Maud intersection. Uh, that this property that he would ask to rezone and restrict for parking and green space, that's where this lies at. The frontage on Main has two houses on it, a large blue vinyl and a white wood frame, wood sided house, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's what would remain as residential duplex, which it is zoned now, in the north portion. So he's asking for the south 95 feet of lots 3, 4, and 5 of block, block 6 in Dunford's addition to be rezoned, only the south 95 feet. Questions for me? 
the deed restriction that was uh, suggested will make sure that this would have no other commercial property put on it, just be used for what his request was. Is that correct? Open green space and parking, overflow, overflow parking, yes. I think he intends to grade it out some to make it more, a uh, little bit more level and, and accessible, but access would be only from Maud Street. There would be no connection to Main Street from the parcel that, he's speak that I'm speaking of. Thank you. Make a motion we pass the voting session February 5. Yes. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item G, the City Council review request from the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve a conditional use permit to sell liquor by the drink within a restaurant business in a CX3 Central Commercial Mixed Use District. The applicants are Larry Hafford and Lisa Shepard for property located at 336 Vine Street. Happy Sports Bar and Grill. Mr. Avery. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Happy Sports Bar and Grill at 336 Vine Street. Uh, presently is known as Jim and Jerry's. Mr. Hafford uh, acquired it or took, took possession of it at the first of the year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Shortly before that, he was informed that the need to uh, get a conditional use for a liquor license, which is the only way a liquor license can be obtained, obtained in the C3 or CX3 districts. Uh, at this time, uh, everything down there is on CX3, Central Area Mixed Use Commercial. We uh, changed that in 2012. Prior to that, it was on C3, Central Area Commercial. And issue, uh, as I stated, issuance of a conditional use permit to sell liquor by the drink in the CX3 district is required before the city clerk's office can address a liquor license issue. The purpose is to allow for the sale of alcohol by the drink to bring a larger variety of food and drink to the downtown area while positively impacting the climate and culture of historic downtown. Sites mostly covered by the building. Uh, you're not required to have uh, off-street parking in the, C in the C3 or CX3 district. Access is from Vine Street and South Broadway. Police and fire protection available with fire station number one being the first responder. As this property is located in the middle of the downtown commercial district, the current restaurant, Jim and Jerry's, has sold the business to the applicants. Uh, liquor licenses are non-transferable, therefore this owner must seek a conditional use permit to obtain a liquor license. And the staff does recommend, and Planning and Zoning Commission does recommend approval of this request for a conditional use permit with the following stipulation. That the conditional use permit would go with the business owner. If the business sells, a new owner would have to apply for and receive a conditional use permit to continue the use for alcohol sales. Questions for me? Mr. Hefford is in the audience tonight if you have questions that I might not be able to answer. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we move this to the voting session to be held tonight. Second. Motion second to move this item to the voting session tonight. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> item H, the City Council will discuss moving the administrative office and collections of municipal utilities to the new government complex on Barron Road. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion we table this item for the present time. Second. Motion second to table item H. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item H has been tabled. Item I, the City Council will discuss property tax liens. Mr. Massingham. <coughs> Back in uh, 2011, uh, then City Manager Doug Bagby and myself uh, went before the council and we'd had an individual that we had a piece of property in the south end and uh, had a demolition lien on it. The city had gone in and turned, tore down the house, had like a four or $5,000 lien on the property, which is really what more than, worth more than the 
more than what the property was worth. Uh, anyway, this individual wanted to uh, get that piece of property and build a house on it. Uh, we came to council and actually had three or four meetings on this and nothing ever got resolved. Uh, so what I'm presenting you tonight is a fairly rough draft of uh, how we might possibly get some of these properties that we have liens on back on the tax rolls. Uh, we'll just kind of go through this program that should be on your iPad. Uh, it says vacant and abandoned properties are a burden to our city and its residents in many ways, including the fact that they often become havens for criminal activity and they reduce neighborhood property values. This program will give citizens more opportunities to redevelop these lots by building a house, which will increase the property value of the lot and the neighborhood. This will also take vacant lot that has little value and put it back on the tax rolls, increasing the tax base for the city and the other taxing districts. And like I said, this is a fairly left draft. We just kind of wanted your all's input before we proceed with it. But uh, step one, identify an eligible lot. Eligible lots are lot must be vacant, unimproved real property. Uh, number two, the available lots will be determined by the City of Poplar Planning Department. Now that may also include not just the Planning Department, but the uh, Collector's Office and Code Enforcement. Uh, applicant qualifications. An applicant to qualify must have paid all real estate taxes on all properties that they own in the City of Poplar Bluff and have no outstanding violations on these properties. Uh, maintenance requirement while they're working on the property would be a uh, keep the property free and clear of debris and excess vegetation, realizing that if we're constructing a house, there is going to be construction debris, but keep it to a minimum. Uh, comply with all city ordinances, including keeping grass cut to no higher than 12 inches and pay current real estate taxes assessed on the lot. Uh, step four, improvements to the property. The applicant agrees to construct a home on the property within a 24 month period from the uh, date of application. The home must meet all building codes and zoning codes as set out by the City of Papa Bluff Code of Ordinances. Uh, as far as applying for the program, the con they would contact the planning department to see what lots are available for the program, uh, fill out an application, return to the planning department. Uh, if approved by the planning department, a recommendation will be sent to the city council for their approval. Uh, they will be required to sign a promissory note to the city of Popper Bluff promising to pay the lien. If a home is constructed within 24 month period, the city would forgive the lien and the property would once again be on the tax rolls producing a piece of property. Uh, each applicant to the vacant lot program will be reviewed by staff to determine if the parcel meets the program requirements. Staff will provide, provide a recommendation to the city council regarding the application. And if the application is approved by the city council, the successful applicant will receive a deed to the property with a maintenance lien allowing the property to be reacquired by the city of Popper Bluff should the applicant fail to meet the lot. Uh, some of these last things, the city attorney and I will have to uh, actually look in to see exactly what has to be done, but that's just kind of a rough idea of what we're thinking of to uh, help some of these lots. And I sent you all, just handed out a list of all the uh, lots that have demolition liens on them. And the liens total $125,000 over a period of years. Some of them actually ha have taxes outstanding on them, some of them don't. I actually have pictures of all these, but uh, I didn't print them out to bring to you. And some of these probably, some of these lots might not even be buildable. That's why I said somebody from the planning department, we'd have to go out and value each lot and then make a list of what lots we think would be uh, available for building a house. And we just kind of go from there. But if y'all have any suggestions or comments or questions or recommendations, uh, welcome to hear them. I think, uh, it's a good, <clears throat> go ahead. I think it's a good thing for us to work on, maybe get those lots back into some kind of viable use. And I, I appreciate us working on that. One of the things I thought we might add to it is if these lots are too small to build on by according to our curtain ordinances, then possibly that we could um, offer it to the landowners on either side and make some kind of a deal like 
if they would buy half, like you do with an alley. Sometimes when you vacate an alley, it might be a good use of the land if you can't build a house on it. And then the second piece is I would say that they would either need to escrow this money or do a bond because I don't want to go two years and find out that they're not going to pay the bill. Right. I, don't want to, I don't want another problem. So I think we should uh, do something to secure that. And also there are a lot of several cities I looked at, uh, Springfield, St. Louis, Memphis, some of the larger cities. On those smaller lots that aren't buildable, they have what they call a uh, you mow, you own program. So if the... Uh, <coughs> And they have to be adjacent to the property. If somebody lives next door to a vacant lot that's not buildable, if that person agrees to mow that grass for a year, then they would take title to the land after a year, and then it would become theirs and becomes part of their... Now, this can't include any flood buyout properties, anything like that, but uh, we have a lot of lots around town that just kind of sit there, and it would cut down on what we have to mow and what we have to take care of. I think it sounds like a good cleanup program for our city. Getting ready to say, you know, the street department now mows all these lots at uh, an expense to us, and sure. that would allow them more to work on the streets and do other maintenance and things. Man. Uh, I just wanted to clarify this is uh, something that uh, the city council in the past has taken a look at. Uh, it's somewhat of a creative um, process that. Uh, uh, has been developed by some cities around the state. Uh, it has not been challenged uh, in courts. There's there's no uh, you know final judicial uh, determination of that. But let me let me remind you these that are listed on here. The city does not own these. Uh, they have a lien by virtue of what we have expended. Uh, to either demolish and or to maintain them. Um, this, pro this process was debated uh, heavily around 2009-2010 by the City Council. Uh, there was uh, one or two council members at that time that believed that it was in violation of Article 25 of the Missouri Constitution in that we were giving away city-owned property. Um, which, you know, was a, a good theoretical argument. Most people believe that it, it is without merit, but nevertheless, it was a very a genuine uh, argument and position that was taken, and as a result of that, at that time, given the um, composition of the city council, they took no action on it. Other cities have been doing this for some time around the state, been doing it successfully. Um, it, it is a situation where you have to look lot by lot, case by case. But in order to uh, move on, for instance, this list and others that will inevitably go on it in the future, uh, you'll have to uh, initiate a judicial proceeding uh, in order to uh, convert your lien uh, into a sale of the property, at which time the city would then uh, purchase it for the amount of the lien. Uh, it's uncertain on these properties that have tax liens uh, from the county collector how the priorities would would uh, you know would pan out, um, but. This is a very meritorious idea, and it's been used very successfully in other cities in the state of Missouri, and I would uh, recommend uh, that we uh, move forward with, move forward with uh, refining the proposal that, as Mr. Massingham said, is a, is a rough draft proposal. Uh, I, I would uh, recommend that we don't move it to the voting session on February 5th but that uh, uh, by your consensus, uh, you ask Mr. Maskham and myself to uh, further refine this. And I think it's a very worthwhile project, very worthwhile program that, that we really need to explore. It's not quite ready to be voted upon and put into ordinance, uh, but it's something that Mr. Uh, Mayor DeGarris has been looking at for some time. and. Uh, uh, I would ask that you direct the city manager and the city attorney uh, to refine and develop this more. 
some of those lots when they when the owner receives the lien amount they've actually contacted the city and want to just give it to us so you know some of those on there we'd probably just be signed over to us I'm not sure which ones or they may have changed their minds by now but they have asked us that on some of them we need a motion to ask you or just by consensus ask you to I think just consensus to proceed with a plan and and, per, and perhaps move it to a further um, workshop session at some point in the future I would not say February 5th but I you know I think the mayor might like to have a motion just to make it a matter of record so I'd make the motion yeah. you can reword it what you said <laughs> Okay, so there's a motion to allow the city manager and city attorney to further work this and bring it back to us at a later time in the near future. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We go on to action required items. Bill number 8042. The city council will take action on an ordinance mm -hmm. accepting a bid to replace the city's firewall. Move for first reading of bill number 8042 mm -hmm. by caption only. Second. Motion second for the first reading of Bill 8042. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Richardson. An ordinance accepting a bid from Broad Tech Company for replacement of the city firewall. Move for second reading of Bill number 8042 by caption only. Second. Motion second for the second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Richardson. An ordinance accepting a bid from Broad Tech Company for replacement of the city firewall. Move for adoption of bill number 8042. Second. Motion second to adopt. Any questions or comments? Roll call, Mrs. Kirby. Councilman Crocker. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Black. Yes. Councilwoman Horton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McVeigh. Yes. Mayor DeGarris. Yes. Thank you. Bill number 8042 is adopted. Bill number 8043, the City Council will take action on an ordinance approving a conditional use permit to sell liquor by the drink in a CX3 Central Commercial Mixed Use District for Happy Sports Bar and Grill located at 336 Vine Street. Move for first reading of Bill number 8043 by caption only. Second. Motion second for the first reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Richardson. An ordinance granting a conditional use permit to Larry Hafford and Lisa Shepard for the sale of liquor by the drink at a restaurant located at 336 Vine Street in Papa Bluff, Missouri, and known as Haffey's Sports Bar and Grill. Move for second reading of Bill number 8043 by caption only. Second. Motion second for second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Richardson. An ordinance granting a conditional use permit to Larry Hafford and Lisa Shepard for the sale of liquor by the drink at a restaurant located at 336 Vine Street in Popper Bluff, Missouri, and known as Haffey's Sports Bar and Grill. Move for adoption of Bill number 8043. Second. Motion second to adopt. Any questions or comments? Roll call, Mrs. Kirby. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Black. Yes. Councilwoman Horton. Yes. Councilman Crocker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McVeigh. Yes. And Mayor DeGarris. Yes. Seven yes votes. Thank you. Bill number 8043 is adopted. Next item, the city City Council of the City of Pop Bluff will meet in a closed meeting in which they will discuss such matters which are exempt under the Open Meeting Law, section 610.021.1, .2, .3, .9, .11, .12, .1, .3, .4, .5, .6, .7, .8, .9, .10, .11, .12, .13, .14, .15, .16, .17, .18, .19, .20, .21, .22, .23, .24, .25, .26, .27, .28, .29, .30, .31, .32, .33, .34, .35, .36, .37, .38, .39, .40, .41, .42, .43, .44, .45, .46, .47, .48, .49, .50, .51, .52, .53, .54, .55, .56, .57, .58, .59, .60, .61, .62, .63, .64, .65, .66, .67, .68, .69, .70, .71, .72, .73, .74, .75, .76, .77, .78, .79, .80, .81, .82, .83, .84, .85, .86, .87, .88, .89, .90, .91, .92, .93, .94, .95, .96, .97, .98, .99, .100, .101, .102, .103, .104, .105, .106, .107, .108, .109, .110, .111, .112, .113, .114, .115, .116, .117, .118, .119, .120, .121, .122, .123, .124, .125, .126, .127, .128, .129, .130, .131, .132, .133, .134, .135, .136, .137, .138, .139, .140, .141, .142, .143, .144, .145, .146, .147, .148, .149, .150, .151, .152, .153, .154, .155, .156, .157, .158, .159, .160, .170, .171, .172, .173, .174, .175, .176, .177, .178, .178, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .179, .
That's really all I have. Further entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> We're adjourned. Okay. Oh. Yes, the chamber, thank you.